Welcome back, everyone. Dr. Perry Bush with us today from Bluffton University, continuing our discussion about the situation in Ukraine. You know, we touched on it last time, Dr. Bush, about you've had contacts or you know people there and you're, you're getting updates. If you could kind of fill us in on that. Sure. You know, Jeff, I was in Ukraine. It was 10 years ago now. I was there as a Fulbright scholar in Zaporizhia, which is a seat of about 800,000 people down in the uh, lower part of the Dnipro River. And um, so we made friends and we've stayed in touch over all these years. And now I'm getting really kind of scary reports. Um, it's bringing the war home for me as a person. Um, we made one good friend and she in fact she visited us here in the States and stayed with us for several months after we got home. And uh, at that point she had a teenage son and now he's a nurse with the Ukrainian army um, down in the Donbass where Putin's armies are approaching. And his units are in severe combat. And so the stories she's getting from him are, I mean, at least bring the war home for me. I mean, he's reporting horrific battlefield casualties among the units and with, with which he's attached. Um, and I don't doubt that he's experiencing some personal trauma as he's dealing with lots of uh, battle casualties and the body's torn up by this, by the kind of warfare that's being practiced down there. It's uh, it, that, that, really has kind of helped me envision i think about this good friend of ours who's now really just a mom frightened for her son and you know the donbass that's where the war is shifting now that's down in southeastern ukraine and that's where putin is is reorienting his armies and um you know the thought is the troops are going to come up from the south and then come down from the north and they'll be they'll try to catch the large ukrainian army down in the Donetsk region in a pincer movement and i think about this young man and what that means for him yeah it's it's got to be surreal to know people who are actually in this situation they had stats yesterday saying there were 5.2 million refugees but there were over 13 million people who were still ukrainians who were still there literally stuck in war zones and you were talking about the the person you know that's one of the the big fears that they're going to be stuck there and yeah. you know fighting for food and fighting for medical attention that right. kind of thing I mean, we're going to, we're starting to read now, uh, and we will read more of uh, the survivors from Mariupol, this major city on the Sea of Azov that Putin is just leveling, right? It's the, it's the last link between, um, between his forces in the Crimea and his forces there in the east. And um, uh, many of those uh, survivors are filtering to Zaporizhia, where I've got another friend, a former translator, and uh, they're being greeted as refugees, and I don't doubt we'll hear more stories. Uh, of the horror inflicted. I mean, they're, they're, they're now uncovering uh, satellite footage of mass graves. I mean, there are upwards of, I don't know, 20, 30,000 civilians that have been killed in the continual shelling that Putin has subjected that city to. And in some ways, this is functional for his war effort. He wants to create mass panic among Ukrainian civilians. He wants to inflict terror, and that's certainly what his troops, are, in many cases, are doing. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, I hear stories from my uh, old translator down in Zaporizhia. You know, and um, uh, the you know once I'm hearing this on a Facebook connection, and there's an air raid siren going off. So you know that that if the war comes into her vicinity, as it, it might, Russian troops may then push north from Mariupol. Um, I worry about her safety. Does she give you any sense about the Ukrainian mentality? Because. Putin keeps pushing the propaganda nonsense that they're somehow liberators in that country. Does she give you a sense what the Ukrainian people, they, they just have to see them as invaders, I would think. Absolutely, they see them as invaders. I mean, when we were there 10 years ago, that whole region of the, of the country spoke Russian. We were learning Ukrainian, and we would use Ukrainian on the streets because that's what the Fulbright program urged that we do. It's Ukraine. Ukraine is the, Ukrainian is the, is the language of the country. People would correct us in Russian, but um, I, I know people down there are bilingual, but but sense of Ukrainian nationalism now is absolutely overwhelming across all sectors of the country. Um, uh, I mean, the footage that your viewers are seeing right now would reiterate why. I mean, uh, these are invaders who are wrecking and destroying our country. And um, uh, there's very, very little interest in Russia, Russification. I know one woman who won't speak Russian anymore. She just had it. We're not doing that anymore, even though her father was Russian. Um, she won't speak Russian, neither will any of her friends. Uh, the, the sense of deep, bitter enmity that this war is creating. And of course, you know, it works both ways. Uh, I'm just reminded of the horror of the war on all sides. Uh, you know, one of the Ukraine's major military successes in these last week has been the sinking of the Moskva, 
which is this major Russian warship. Well, you know, the Russian government has said all those 500 sailors on the Moskva have been rescued. Well, they're, they're not appearing, and no one knows where they are. And so I think of the 500 moms and dad, Russian moms and dads and, and, and wives worrying about their loved ones on that ship. I mean, this is just, you know, you're one of the horror of war on both sides. But when I hear from my Ukrainian friends, Jeff, as you're suggesting, Ukrainian nationalists are reigning supreme and they have no interest in ever dealing with Russia again. The, the bitterness and enmity that this war has created will last generations. It's interesting to get your perspective, especially from somebody who knows someone there in those contexts. Dr. Bush, as always, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Always going to be with you, Jeff. Nice chatting with you. We'll be back right after this.